Hi everybody, it's Steve Smith, AKA R Dallas. And in this short video, I'm gonna show you why you might wanna use a local NuGet server for testing out NuGet packages that you're not ready to publish to NuGet.org or your company's NuGet server. Let's get started. Okay, so I've created a simple NuGet package called rdallas.leftpad. It's not actually out on NuGet.org, don't go looking for it, but it does give an example of how you would go and create a simple NuGet package that you can then host locally and still make use of in your projects. You'll find the repo here on my GitHub and there'll be a link in the description as well. You might've heard of LeftPad because it's a piece of programming code that actually broke the internet a couple of years ago. There's an article on Quartz that talks about it. And XKCD actually created a comic that's basically describing the situation where depending on these low level common libraries for NPM or NuGet can totally take down a large section of the internet if something were to happen to them, either due to maliciousness or neglect. But aside from that, let's talk about why you might want to have a local NuGet package that you can do testing on without having it published out to NuGet.org. Now, the first thing that you need to do if you want to be able to test a NuGet package locally is get a NuGet package. NuGet package in its source form uh, after it's been published is just a nupkeg file, .nupkg. So we're going to create one of those. So inside of this left pad repo, I'm going to navigate to the project file and I'm going to go ahead and use the command line to create this file that we need. Now it's important when you create NuGet packages, if you're going to be consuming them in production, that you always build them in release mode. Now, of course, you can do this in Visual Studio or Rider or your IDE of choice, but you can do all these tasks from the command line as well, which makes it much easier to script as part of your CI CD process. The other thing that you might want to know if you're doing CI CD is that it's really easy to specify where the output should go. So if you wanted to just go into the current folder, which is often the case in a CI CD scenario, you can just give it an output flag and use dot. With that done, if we look at the contents of the folder now, we can see that we have our dallas.leftpad 1.1.0.nupkeg. Now, the next thing that we need to do is publish that to our local NuGet package source. We're going to look at the existing package sources that are on my machine, and we're gonna make sure that we can add the local NuGet package source to that list. Okay, so the first thing that we wanna do is see a list of our enabled NuGet package sources, and we do that with the .NET NuGet list source command. This will show you all of the package sources that are currently enabled on your machine, and you get this exact same experience in Visual Studio or other tools. Now to add a local NuGet package source, we just need to use the .NET NuGet add source command. We're going to specify the file path, c colon backslash local NuGet in my case. That could also be a network share, it could be a Linux path if you're on Linux, or it could be a URL if you're using a, a web-based one like NuGet.org. Then you, have, you can give it a name, dash n is the flag for name, and then I'm going to call it local NuGet. Now you see it's been added successfully. If we run the list again, you see that it shows up. Now, at this point, we can go back to where we have our nupkeg file, and we want to get it to this file. Now, one thing that you can do is, of course, just copy-paste it there using the CLI or using you know, Windows Explorer, whatever you like. But you can also use the .NET NuGet push command to send it there. So let's try that. Now, notice for the .NET NuGet push command, when we pass it the location of the NuGet source, we are specifying that file path, or it would be a URL, not the name in this case. With that, you can see that it's copied the file into our package source that is the local NuGet. Now let's see how we can consume it. Let's create a new .NET console application that's going to demonstrate the use of our library. All right, so we have a simple console app. It's doing hello world. Let's show what happens if we use the built-in pad left. And then we'll also use left pad, which is our extension that we're creating. Now there's gonna be a problem here because it's not gonna be able to build. Let's go ahead and see what that issue is. And you can see that it doesn't have any way of knowing what left pad is. So what we need to do now is add the package reference for it. And we can actually do that from the command line as well. You can see that it was successful in adding the ardalis.leftpad package to the project. So now we're closer to being able to build. However, 
because this is an extension method, we are going to have to add a using statement for it to work. With that in place, now we are able to successfully build and run the application, which you can see provides the same functionality as the built-in pad left functionality. If you are going to use a local NuGet package source, I do recommend that you use subfolders for each of your packages. It'll make it much easier for you to manage them. And also it'll have higher performance if you have a lot of packages that you're trying to scan through. Also, if you do want to have a specific package source set up for a given solution, you can do that as well by using a NuGet.config file. You'll find the documentation for that in a link inside of the description. Hope you found this helpful. If you liked the video, please like it, subscribe for more updates, and keep on coding.